tables turned. You know, it's sad that I had to turn to uh, the Jews to weigh in before the martial artists started weighing in as well. But that's what happened. Basically, my cousin's a Jew, and I trained. And he's a black belt in karate, and he knows he can't beat me. Uh, at least that's what I was told. Like he's some, he's something up there. His mom too, and their trainer was on the Olympic uh, taekwondo team, or excuse me, a karate team at one point. And you know, I learned a few moves there. I saw how he moves. He gets down, and it became clear to me uh, at an early age. But yes, as a teenager. Uh, I would have been more than a formidable opponent, if not better than the guy on the Olympic team. But now, you know, I eat the Olympic team guys for lunch. So when you look at, you know, well, who who are his teachers? You know, I'll give you a few. One's the Olympic uh, guy from um, the karate studio in uh, Michigan. One's Wing Lam. One is I believe the Clampets, United Academy of Martial Arts. These people taught me what I already know already, even though from TV, but how the Asians do it. And so I altered it, you know to how Africans do it. So I may as well have been watching movies and then altering it. I mean, look at the stances, right? They're part of African culture, dancing stances, um, statues, left foot forward, uh, the pyramid text. Okay, these are ritual stances that have ritual meanings and the armies are named after ritual groups, uh, you know, uh, temples, you know, raw unit, etc. Set unit, look at Ramses and the different units, the different gods, right? Ram, Seas. The ram sees, right? It is always right there in the wordplay. It goes back to Babylon and spreading the pieces apart. The, the Satanists who um, confused you with language um, kept some kind of a decoder, if you will, to understand the language themselves. And so when you look at, um, for example, this beer, Victoria, I'll take a picture. You'll see, uh, first thing that comes to mind to a lot of people, for example, is Queen Victoria. You see them giving the symbol of Hades and riding an interesting animal, um, which looks like a dragon. You see a king, right, and he has something very interesting in his hand. Now, weigh in on that. I mean, that is, you know, I'm not going to tell you what I think it is because these people make up bullshit and pretend like I'm nuts, but I'll let you weigh in on that. I'm going to also write a letter to them, ask them my names. I doubt they'll tell you the truth about it, but they might give you a little tiny hi uh, history and throw you a bone or something. I don't know. Um, again, Victoria Cervasia, Cervasia, Modelo, Mexico. And of course, the fact that it's showed in the U.S. and Modelos are very popular, just like Seoul and Corona, Pacifico, etc. I'm not sure if Pacifico is from Mexico. I think it is. Anyway, um, it shows you that, yes, they have a certain relationship with the governing class. I think that goes without saying. Sorry for the background noise. I'm out here in Gilroy, and I wanted to use some visual aids. Uh, I don't know how I'm going to do that. But to make a long story short, yes, you know, I deserve my rightful place. Ask yourself, why don't they care about the Guinness Book of World Records when it comes to speed? Well, because they would have to consider distance, right? And that would automatically give the African the upper hand. We are the people who have been conditioned to be great warriors. You know, to, once you accept environmental factors are the main cause and you ask yourself, well, who designed it? Who, what, where, when, why? You, you're forced to the conclusion that yes, all this is happening because the people who are the most jealous have teamed up with other jealous people to stigmatize the most naturally gifted race. I mean, as soon as you come to the conclusion that one race must be better than others, right? Which is just common sense. If you look at averages, right? Are blacks on average, you know, one of the tallest races? Yes. Are, you know, are there six times more whites from all over Europe and all over the world, right? Irish, Italian, right? Six times more whites. There's probably as many Irish, for example, or Germans in America than there are blacks. But we outperform their whole race together, you know, the whole white race. So when you do the math and you look at the statistics about Nigerians being the most educated group and more successful on average than even whites, even though whites own most of the capital and blacks as a group, are about 13% of America and own less than one half of 1% of the capital. When you connect mind, body, and soul and you look at it from an Afro-Asiatic Christian perspective, you're forced to the conclusion that yes, I am the top martial artist and no, it's not a coincidence that I come from the bloodline of Judah, Ebo, um, um, Afro-Asiatic, Nahum, and Samson, and um, Benaniah, um, you know, Joshua, 
are all put together. Okay, Samson, Samson. So it's like, look, the Bible was get, it was a, it's a story of martial artists, you know, who were ill motherfuckers. Some of them had mastered their chi to the point where they could pull down a temple. They were this big, bad Rastafarian guy with strength. Other guys used their ability to manipulate the sun and use tactical applications of arts, you know, at Jericho, um, and, and used their ability to connect to God. Uh, and all of them were connecting to God, but in different ways, and they're applying their martial arts in different ways. Think of Yoda, right? Did Yoda spend all day crying about how lightsaber duels were not fair? Did he cry about anything not fair to the short man, or did he develop a fighting style for him? Do, you know, do, would Yoda teach um, Luke Skywalker to fight exactly like Yoda, or did he teach him transferable skills? I mean, you all know the answers to these questions. You know, sparring um, is, is similar to fighting, and presentation is similar to stretching, right? He who stretches the best and focuses on those kinds of principles has the best form. He who focuses on actual combat skills, you know, is the best at sparring. It's that simple. I mean, this is not being the top martial artist with 175 IQ who's the son of two doctors here from the most educated uh, demographic in America. Okay, this, you don't have to be me from a family of brain surgeons and lawyers and shit to get it. What the fuck is wrong with you people? Okay? Do I have to, you want to, as soon as you play your expert card, you know I'm going to play my black, you know, supremacist card. I come from a superior stock than you, according to that same Western propaganda scale. No, you listen to me. You listen to me! If you're going to start hiding behind, oh, no one's heard of you and bitch shit like that. When my, my shit is, my, you know, my, my combo, 15 hits, you know, 1.2 seconds from Deontay Wilder's boxing range with karate gloves on is a fucking record. It's a world record. And you all know it. Okay, when you see those boxers doing those little uppercuts, okay, they probably can't do 15 of those uppercuts in 1.2 seconds, and they're barely covering any distance. Don't you see everything is, their science is all designed to make the white man look good, and his little, little, literally little allies from Europe, the guys from the other side of the Mediterranean, they used to roll their bitch ass home when we expelled them. We didn't expel them just once, we expelled them all through history until they had technology. Because we have a superior mind, body, and soul. I'm part white and part Jewish. Okay, I've trained with Asians. My neighbors are fucking Asians. But this is the fucking truth. Now grow up and accept it.